Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Well, what I do know is that you know this already. You've seen the thumbnail. You've seen the title. You may even have read some of the description. Uh, so you know that this is a, a jewel breaker palette bingo with the ever beautiful, ever youthful, ever lovely Anya. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours we get to use and see this beautiful look in glorious Technicolor then my friend you have the best seat in the house grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy because here it comes hey <clears throat> welcome back from the intro um, I'm not in my usual uh, tops that I wear I've got a lot of those tops by the way in case you're wondering the blue ones um, because normally I do my makeup and then I get dressed and then I start my day bit of a change around today Mate of mine, car problems, needed a help by having a lift to work, so I had a 5am alarm this morning to get to her for 6 o'clock to get her to work for quarter to 7, so I'm already dressed. I'm telling you now, 5am in the morning, I am not doing makeup. But, you will have seen from the intro and the description, if you've read it, and the thumbnail, that this is a collab with the beautiful Anya. Uh, and we are using Jawbreaker because both of us have recently got it and want to play a bit more. Um, so I suggested that we did a palette bingo kind of. In uh, I'm going to put a picture. Where shall I put the picture? I'll put it up there. Where we both use the shade Jawbreaker. I then random selected numbers four. Let me. Um, I haven't quite remembered all the names of the shades yet. So we both used Jawbreaker. I then selected cute and cotton candy, and then the random numbers that Anya generated brought up bite me and delicious. So you can see it's actually worked out quite a good selection to be honest um, there's not, although to be fair there's not much in here that wouldn't work with, with each other, it's a very well thought out um, palette so I'm just I'm on the struggle bus this morning thanks okay. before I do anything else I'm going to take these swatches off otherwise I'm going to get it all over what I'm wearing and whereas that's not normally a problem, this is the top that I'm wearing today. It was clean on, so I don't really want to have to change it. Now, uh, this is a teaching channel. Uh, with collabs, I don't always go as in-depth with my teaching, but I do tend to slip uh, and give the odd little tip here and there. But because of my chronic pain, I still do struggle. So... I don't blend as quick as some people do and if I'm blending too slow for you or talking too slow for you please use the speed widget I won't mind I won't even know now my face has been washed moisturized SPF and a primed two primers today uh, I'm still trying that touch and soul no problem primer 
um, and as always my antiperspirant primer over the top of that. Now if you want more details about my antiperspirant facial primer and why I use it uh, there's a film in the description box which will give you all the details you need. Let's get you zoomed in because being a teaching channel we come in close so you can actually see what I'm doing rather than zooming in being you can still see my cleavage. Uh, on my eye I have got the Crow and Pebble White Base in blank page cotton. This is actually a sample pot so it's not absolutely full as you can see. Um, and you can get sample pots from them as well as full size. They've got six different colours, starting with white, ending with a deep chocolate brown and black. So you're going to find something that will work for your skin tone. Uh, details of discount code are below, and all discount codes are clearly marked, whether they are affiliate, where I earn from them, or non-affiliate, where I don't. Now, I am just going to talk through eye shape again, because I do this on all my videos, because it is important. A lot of people out there that have got deep set eyes or what are now being referred to as double lidded eyes like myself often think we have hooded eyes because we, we experience the same issues that people with hooded eyes have in that we get transfer of shimmers onto our upper lid if we are doing a cut crease we can't just cut along our socket we have to come up onto the upper lid and even when we use glitter glue we get bare patches by the end of the night. Now, if when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid. Can't see much of it, but you can see it. So that means I don't have a hooded eye. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to the lash line on any part of your eye that you have either a half or a full hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, the reason people with deep set eyes like myself, or like I said, they're sometimes called double lidded eyes now, have the same problems. Let me show you. If I cover the, vis the visible part of my mobile lid and then close my eye, I've got as much mobile lid again that tucks back away. Then if I cover my static lid and do the same thing, I've got a lid there that folds back away. So that's why a lot of people with hood with deep set eyes think they have hooded eyes, but you don't. There is a difference. Now, if you have got hooded lids, you can still follow my tutorial. You can follow anybody's tutorial. Grab a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and on your static lid draw a crease line where you create a mobile lid on your static lid. Now with my tutorials at least I always put a deeper colour through my crease which you would then put through your new crease, the line that you've made. Because the darker the colour the further away it looks so it will give the impression when you're talking to people that that part of your eye is receding back and it will be less obvious that you've created a lid on your static eyelid. Okay? There we go. I'm going to start putting some colour on now. Uh, right. I am going... Which brush is this? I'm going to try... No, I want the fluffier one to start with. Mm. I'm going to go in with this Boozy Shop Tapered Blending Brush. Now, if you have moved your crease up, obviously you're going to have less space between your crease and brow, so just use slightly more compact brushes than I am. Um, I'm going to go into Cute first. Now, I've not set my lid because I want these colours to be as bright as possible. So when I first apply colour to them, I need to pat it into place like this. 
and slowly build the colour up. Because what we're doing now is we're actually setting the base with a colour. And if you start blending straight away, you're going to get patchy bits. Because although this isn't a sticky base to touch, it will grab colour. Because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to hold on to colour so that you get as good a look and as long lasting a look as possible. So you can see I'm just tapping this colour on, just to build it up across the lead. I'm taking it from my crease right way up. Um, I do leave sort of 4 or 5 mil between the top of the colour and my brow, just so that my brow highlight shows up. Now I do have issues, there are three different issues with my eyes. I have creasing here and here, which on both eyes, which drive me crackers because sometimes you can blend on them and sometimes you can't. And over here the eye that I'm blind in, I've got, you can see I've got a super, super deep creasing just here. Sometimes I have to stretch the lid out to actually get the colour to work on those, but don't do that unless you absolutely have to. Right, once I've built the colour up, I'm going to add it some more pigment to the brush and I'm just going to do some very very light blending so tiny little circles holding the brush right at the end as you go towards the nose you blend towards the nose bounce a little bit in the middle come up a bit reverse the direction because you're going away from the nose now and come back again and do a bit of a bounce at the end and come up and go back to the original direction and the reason I'm doing this is because, well, one, I'm 45 years old, and two, I've lost about 11 stone in the last few years. So the skin on my eyelids is not as tight as it used to be. And by doing little circular movements like this, you're gently moving the skin around and making sure you don't get any white patches. Now, if you do get somewhere like here, like I said, which is saying, I am not going to let you blend colour on me. Make sure you've got all the edges blended how you want. And then just tap the colour back onto the stubborn bit and say, I'm in charge here. You're going to look how I want you to. Right, I'm going to do this on the other eye. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Anya. Now, I've followed Anya for ages. Uh, and the fir one of the first collabs we did was in my photo inspiration series. Um, she does very, very bright looks. Um, but she does them in a very editorial way. So you have more structured lines. You don't have as much blending between the colours. Um, and you get such an impactful look like that. Um, you know, I've, I've seen some people, you know, I've done an editorial look and people have gone, oh, you need to learn how to blend. And I'm like, well, I do know how to blend. This is an editorial look, which is different. And they have since apologised and everything, so... They just didn't realise what they were watching, to be honest. Um, editorial looks are hard to pull off. Because if you don't do them well, they can look clunky and like you don't know how to blend. But Anya always, always, I don't think I've ever seen her do a dud look at all, ever. So we started collabing together and she's got a dog called Jeffree Star. I believe she's got one called Sephora as well. And she's known for wearing things like this, holding her hair back. So I saw a pair and just had to get them. Because it makes me chuckle. But she's one of the nicest women you could ever meet. She really is. She ironed Nona from hashtag my so called life. Um, we've actually created a little mini group ourselves, which I nicknamed the Bitches of Eastwick. Because we all got treated very badly by a larger, far more popular 
although we fail to understand why people can't see who I act, YouTuber. Um, so we've we've just sort of we are the bitches of Eastwick, you know, kind of support for each other over the whole thing. Um, and we all get on very well. We talk pretty much every day, either on in, usually on Insta, sometimes on Facebook, but usually on Insta. Um, and we've been in a couple of larger collabs together, so it's really nice. Um, she's such a lovely lady. She's an American. And uh, I really wish that I lived closer so we could hop round each other's and have a cup of coffee and set the world to right, you know. But well, I'm just going to see whether that, you know, has gone patchy again. I do get this problem because of the super deep creasing. It's where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old. So if that doesn't tell you not to pull your eye around, I don't know what does. This is damage caused 40 years ago which only really established itself, I showed up on my eyes a couple of years ago. I'm like, why have I suddenly got this deep creasing? Where's that come from? Right, I'm cleaning my brush off on a clean washcloth. And I grabbed one of these e.l.f. blending eye brushes to try. Um, I finally managed to get a hold of their the e.l.f. Paulus Putty Primer thing. I was in the process of trying that one. And while I was there I thought, oh, they'd got special offer on them there. Brushes and everyone raves about e.l.f. brushes so I thought I'd grab one to try. It certainly feels very soft. Um, if you get fallout like this, really don't worry about it, just dust it away. If you're the sort of person that does your base first, Providing you're under 30, just put some uh, powder down to catch it. If you're over 30, baking is not our friend. Uh, in which case, just tap your brush off and spend a bit longer building it up. Right, I'm going to go into Delicious. And I'm going to pack some of that onto this brush. I haven't used this shade yet, I don't think. I've swatched it, but I don't think I've used this one yet. And what I'm going to do, because I've now set this, I can now start doing a windscreen wiper movement all the way through the crease. If you've moved your crease up, do this along the new crease line that you've set yourself, okay? I'm really interested to see exactly what Anya comes up with, because obviously we're using exactly the same colours, I've added a bit more pigment and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some circular blending, but I'm going to keep the bristles in contact with this line because I don't want to take it up the eye very much. I just want to smudge the edge of this out a little bit and move it up the eye just a fraction to give that illusion of depth, especially if you've had to create a new um, crease. If you see it starting to wear away here like, like mine is doing because it's being awkward, don't worry, we can go back in and fix that in a minute. Just concentrate on getting this as blended out as possible because the look I'm going for today is a more blended look. And just buff really gently along the edges and go back into the brush I used before, pick up a bit more of that cute and just fill it in again. Okay. Everything is fixable in makeup. It really is. Except bad Botox, but it's less easy to fix. Right, I'm just going to pop some of this in the outer corner of my eye, just to deepen this up. I like this shade, but it's obviously the deep. The deeper the colour, the more difficult it is to blend. But this is okay. It's not blending out too badly at all. 
and it's not going on too thick straight away either so if you are a beginner it won't intimidate you because you don't suddenly get a thump a huge lump of pigment that you then have to blend out hmm I like the look of that actually I really can't wait to see what Anya does it would be interesting to see if we come out with a similar look where we both get the same idea, you know? That's why I started my um, photo collaboration series that Anya has been a big part of both on her own and as part of the Bitches of Eastwick group because, you know, with my photo collab you have a photo as inspiration and you can only use colours in that photo but you don't have to use all of them so normally I don't think, I think I've only had one I've done 20 odd episodes now and I've only had one that was even mildly similar and even that wasn't exactly the same um, so it would be interesting where in this case we are both using exactly the same colours why does this not want to blend on this eye? It'd be interesting to see if we come out with the same look. But obviously we do get on extremely well, we do think the same, we have a lot of the same palettes, we have a lot of the same taste when it comes to makeup. Um, but as I say, she does do more editorial looks, so she may be doing something really wild and out there. Or she may be doing something a bit softer, who knows? But that's the fun of doing collabs, you never know what the other person's doing. I mean, when you're watching me, I'm going to be watching Anya to see exactly what she's done. That's half the fun of it. That's why it takes me a while to get back to you in comments on a collab video. Because I'm too busy watching the person's video that I collabed with. <laughs> right, again, a little bit of buffing along the edge there. How's that blended in? Mm. See, my eye is going to be a pain in the butt today. Like I said, if the circular movements work for you and don't leave you with this sort of barcoding effect, then do not pull your eye out. If you imagine that the skin on your eye is tissue paper, that's how lightly you should be pulling it around, i.e. you shouldn't. I'm just going to pop a wee bit of cute, yeah, cute, back in there. Hmm. I'm looking slightly... Um, like I should be in an Evanescence video. Or Marilyn Manson or Alice Cooper with the... I'm just cleaning the brush off while I'm wittering away talking nonsense to you. You will get that with me if you're new to my channel. Hi, hello, welcome. Um, I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire, live in the south of England and basically can chunter away about all kinds of things for ages. And then other days, my fibro is so bad, I forget my own name. Genuinely, that has happened. I've been married for five years. And I went to sign for something being delivered the other day. And started to sign my maiden name. Just mad. Madness. Right, this is actually a nail brush designed for use with nail acrylic, but I like these because they can, they come down really thin and you get a lot of precision with them. And I like using these when I'm applying shimmers on the lid. Um, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will bugger the pigment up basically. So I'm going to go into Bite Me, which saying pigments is one of the pigments so um, pigments are always marked as 
not recommended for use in the eye area in America. Basically, if you've got very sensitive skin, you may get a reaction to it. So my advice is, if you've got this palette and you're not sure, put some in the crook of your arm and leave it there for sort of 10, 12 hours and see if you get a reaction to it. Um, the main problem that you get from it, that most people get, is staining on their eyelids, but I just cover it up with more makeup the next day and it's not a problem. Right, I have loaded up both sides of the brush and I'm going to use this Revolution Fixing Spray. This is the Vanilla and Coconut. There we go, focus, well done. You can use any spray. You can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or Fix Plus. You can use a priming spray, you can use a setting spray, you can use a shimmer spray. You can even just use clean water. All we're doing is wetting the pigment. So, I'm going to dry the ferrule off to make sure we don't get any moisture going down and loosening the glue holding the bristles and for this side I'm actually going to look down into a mirror so you can actually see what I'm doing otherwise I'm going to be tilted back like this and you're not going to I'm going to be off the top of the screen so I'm just going to apply this onto the lid just where it meets that nice deeper navy. Okay. Oh, this is such a nice colour. I wonder if there's enough on it to do the other eye as well. Let's have a look, shall we? And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And just run it over the top of the navy and just sort of buff the edges just so it blends in nicely I like that I like that a lot actually right clean and dry the brush on the washcloth I'm dry and I'm going to go into cotton candy now cotton candy is a very softly pressed shade. You get a heck of a lot of kick up on it. Um, so be super super careful basically. Otherwise you'll end up losing half of it because it will just fly out of the pan. And then put this on the inner part of the lid bringing it up to meet the purple and then just dragging it very very lightly across the purple and dragging the purple back across the pink just to blend the two together oh that's pretty Right, I'm going to clean the brush off and go in and pick up a little bit more. I mean literally just, just lightly pressing the brush on the surface of this. Can you see the texture of that? So you do need to be super, super careful with that one. Now with this eye, because of that creasing, I have to stretch the lid out because otherwise what happens is um, the shimmer sort of fills up in the crease but without being blended so it's just packed in there loosely and then as I move my eye through the day I end up getting little shimmer particles turning into uh, multi-coloured freckles which were that being the look that I were going for that would be a great shortcut an easy way to do it. However, it's not the look that I want for today. I mean, you can see that it is stretched to there. When I let go, see how much it's gone back? So that shows you just how much that lid has been affected. 
So again, just pulling the two colours together just to blend where they mate. Hmm. And now what you're thinking, you haven't used your breaker yet. No, I know I haven't. Don't worry, saving the best for last. Now, I'm going to pause you while I um, go and chuck some foundation and stuff on. And I'll be back. Well, for you it's going to be instant. For me it'll be, I'll see you the next time that I press the record button. So, here I come. And I am back. I decided purple brows were appropriate because it matches the pink and the purple that I have there. This is the Revolution Pigment Pomade in Royal Purple. And as you can see, when it's against these particular shades, it does look a pinky purple. So it really ties in well with the lid. So, I'm grabbing my flat top brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into Delicious. Now, I've been struggling recently with my fibro and my hay fever. My eyes have been running like nobody's business so I haven't been able to keep eyeliner on. What I've done is I've worked out a trick that gives me the same effect as a winged liner so it'll still make the eye look as if it's pulled out and lifted without actually using liner. What I do, I use the same colour that I pulled through the crease and I'll join it at the end there and just run that really tightly up under the bottom lashes only going about two thirds of the way along. Okay. And I'm really going to pack the brush with pigment. And just on the end here, from the corner of the eye, I'm just going to stamp a darker line. Can you see that? Now, from back here, that gives you the illusion of a wing. There you go. Feel free to use that if you like me. Well, that's gone a bit um, wafty, hasn't it? I might have to sort that out in a minute. It's weird because in in my mirror it does not look patchy. That's so weird. What on earth? I'm just going to grab a a Morphe M three two one. And just tap a bit of pigment back into that bit. That's so weird. In my in my mirror, it looks absolutely fine. There's no patchiness at all. How bizarre! How bizarre! Right. Load the end of the brush up. My darker line in just at the end there. See? And it gives the illusion of putting the eyes up and down. Now, when I blend another colour underneath to soften that line out, it's really important that you stop here and you don't pull it up onto the wing that you've made, otherwise, you'll lose the illusion. Brush is falling everywhere, folks. Oh, for goodness sake, will you stay put? Right. This is actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Um, I really like it because it's flat top, but it's chunky. So it's great for getting up under your lashes. And I'm going to go back into Cute, which is this colour here, as you can see. And I'm just going to use that to very lightly buff out this lower lash line just to soften it up a little bit and you can see I've not got any there here's the eye that I normally manage to poke myself in because obviously no peripheral vision I'm relying on muscle memory flinching and a slightly out of focus viewfinder, because I haven't got a contact lens in, to uh, ensure that I don't poke myself in the eye. Look at that, I actually managed to not do it. Who knew? 
who knew? Now, the observant among you will say, you still haven't used the jawbreaker shade. I'm just about to. Right, this is actually a lip brush I bought off of eBay about 10 years ago. But it is brilliant for tucking up under the tail of a brow. Look at that. Like so. And then in a corner. Oh, that's lovely. Now you can just do in a corner like this. But what I have found is more flattering for my eye shape at least is to bring it under the tear duct and just blend it there. I've just got powder in my eye, that was really not clever. So bring it along under the tear duct and blend it in with the colour. Just the start of the colour that we've got going underneath the eye. Now I'm actually going to use that jawbreaker shade as the highlight on the rest of my face. So I'm going to pause you while I chuck some jawbreaker on my face, uh, put some mascara on, choose a lippy and decide what I'm doing with my hair. So once again, here I come. I am back. And so is my hat, which has actually proved really very popular. Um, the mascara that I used was my Catrice Volume Waterproof Glam and Doll, which is a dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang, but it is waterproof and it is cheaper. And the lip gloss that I've got on is actually one of these new L'Oreal Colorish Shine, and this is in Guava Plump. And the reason it's called, I've got three of this range by the way, I've also got uh, Nectarine Plump and Coconut Plump. Um, the reason they're called Plump is because they do have that ingredient in that makes your lips tingle, which is actually really quite refreshing and quite nice in the summer. I tilted my hat backwards so you can actually see the look, let's put it back on properly, there we go. So, what do we think? I'll put the picture back up there showing the colours that we had to use. And as you can see, Jawbreaker has been an absolutely brilliant setting, uh, <sighs> highlight. Um, I applied it to my face, decided it wasn't quite bright enough, so sprayed my coconut slay all day all over it. I am going through this at a rate of knots this weather. Um, Again, discount code below. And, uh, and then I applied a bit more over the top and then it gave me the pow, 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 pow that I wanted. So, there we go. This is my version of uh, a Jawbreaker palette bingo. Now, I am going to film an intro for this download it to my computer and start editing it to get it uploaded however in real time whilst you are watching me I am going to be watching Anya so if you are one of my 4F babies please go across and check out Anya's film and give her some of the love and support that you show me in my comments all the time. If you are here from Anya's channel, again, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you've decided you'd like to stay. If you're not sure, because you've only seen the one video, I understand completely. I also tend to watch three or four before I decide whether I'm going to uh, subscribe to a channel. I have an awful lot of films that you can choose from. Uh, you can either pick a playlist and let it start running or you can just go to my most recent uploads and see what takes your fancy. Uh, so yeah, 
there we go. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.